The Triple Bind by Dr. Stephen Hinshaw exemplifies the true concerns this psychologist has for young girls in today's society. The title itself encompasses a big portion of what his book is about. What is the Triple Bind? The Triple Bind consists of three things that are expected of girls today. Number one, be good at traditional girl things. This means be kind, classy, bond with your girlfriends, support your boyfriend, and make your family proud. Number two, be good at most of the traditional boy stuff. Things that were once considered boy goals, such as straight A's, being a super athlete, and getting accepted into a top college are now expected of girls as well. Number three, conform to a narrow, unrealistic set of standards that allows for no alternative. So basically, keep your cool and be perfect 100% of the time. Let's have Hinshaw explain it himself. Number one, from the time we've been a species, females, women, girls, have been the ones who are more caregiving and nurturing. They're the ones who bear children. Guys can be empathic and nurturing today. That's a good thing in the last 40 or 50 years. It's not a bad thing to do that. But we expect girls and women to be the ones who are empathic, who take care of everybody. Number two, Last few decades, if you're a girl, you're doing better than boys academically. You've got a chance for athletic scholarships. You're more competitive. So that presents, however, a bind for gals. How can you be best friends forever and number one at the top of your class? Is that psychologically and physically possible to be empathic and caring and at the same time looking out for yourself and steamrolling over your opponents? So that's a double bind, if you will, that's been around for well, since the 60s, women's movement, etc. The triple bind, though, takes into account what I've been examining for the last 10 years or so. Number three today, as a girl, you've got to be really caring and really smart and competitive and look relentlessly hot and sexy while you're doing it and do it effortlessly and no one can see you sweat underneath. So that's the so-called triple bind. It's Through an abundance of research, Hinshaw digs down to uncover where this impossible expectation derives from. Hinshaw opens his book with a brief summary from a popular Disney movie, Enchanted. However, he carefully segues into how this relates his concerns by saying, At first glance, Enchanted may seem like a harmless or even positive fantasy. Who doesn't want to be loved and lived happily ever after? Who doesn't want to be strong, brave, athletic slayer of dragons? And who doesn't want to be beautiful? Does it really matter that in real life no one person could possibly reconcile all these conflicting roles? That succeeding at even one of them takes an enormous amount of effort? That the pressures to look beautiful, not to mention sexy, take a toll of their own? Well, when you consider the real-life situations of the girls who flocked to see Enchanted, maybe it does matter. This observation of the film soon led to, into his explanation of what I like to call the Disney princess progression. Early Disney films such as Snow White, Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty all have similar female portrayal. The helpless woman is saved by the prince thanks to her good looks and feminine features such as her housework and singing voice. However, Disney soon makes a slow but sure turn in the other direction in movies such as Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast. In these movies, the woman initially rejects the man instead of falling for his good looks at first sight. Finally, the more present-day Disney films prove to have a more feministic approach. Movies such as Brave, Frozen, and Tangled all feature a girl who is more independent and adventurous. This goes to show that society is shifting in a direction that allows women more opportunity, but also puts more pressure on them to have this perfect facade of beauty, brains, and brawn. Hinshaw's main focus of the book is to show that due to all the pressures our society places on young girls, it can lead to devastating consequences. One of Hinshaw's most startling statistics in the book is that 25% of all teenage girls suffer from either self-mutilation, eating disorders, depression, and or violence. After displaying these consequences through a combination of some of his patients' personal stories with extensive research, Dr. Hinshaw ultimately provides tools for parents who want to empower their daughters to deal in healthy ways with today's pressures. In conclusion, 
Hinshaw successfully elaborates in his matter-of-fact tone that we live in a society where girls are forced to face internal conflict, which can ultimately turn self-expression into self-destruction. Hinshaw ends his book by saying, Finally, it is up to all of us to see that being real with our daughters and sons about the things that truly matter is our ultimate task as parents, caregivers, and authorities. Those topics include real-life pain and struggles, triumphs large and small, family relationships, and the pursuit of independent goals. They also include ideas that truly engage the mind, activities and actions that challenge society's relentless objectification and consumerism, and an insistence on authentic expression. What better task could there be for us adults to transform a triple bind into a rich set of opportunities?